One winter day in Odisha, on a whim without a plan, we set out on a working Thursday like only free people can. The roads they took us as far as they could, passing the baton to a boat made entirely of wood. Choked by the city, its smoke and its urban crawl, we oohed and aahed as we saw nature's majesty unmatched by any mall. We stepped onto the boat gingerly, alien to the ways that have made us. The vessel swayed gently as we stepped on with unnecessary fuss. The boatman's oars went in and out through the wetlands and marsh, the afternoon sun bathing all and us, warm but not harsh. We laid out our gear, gadgets and equipment. We seemed well prepared. The boy in you, all of five, was as excited as he was scared. The boat surged ahead, gently parting the obliging grass. The afternoon sun shimmered off the water as if a military general's chest decorated in brass. The cameras, big and small, they tried to frame, grab and capture, but no device of man or beast can truly replicate the rawness of nature's rapture. At the edge of the horizon, the hazy hills lay still bathed in calm, as if holding up this watery cradle in their nurturing, benevolent palm. The sounds we heard were all of the earth and some churning of our own blissful solitude, occasionally broken by the train chugging distantly, a strangely welcome interlude. Our eyes and ears adjusted quickly. It is our minds that endlessly wandered, distracted constantly by seeking the perfect Instagram picture many a moment we squandered. Until the first bird made its first flight, eight feet and not much more, snapping us out of all the loops that had kept us trapped before. Here she was, 6,000 miles from home, feeling sheltered in a distant land, gliding gently in the warm Chilka sun, reassured that all went as planned. Soon there was another, and another, and then many a thousand more. As we scrambled for the binoculars and phones, they rose and began to sow. We looked here and we looked there, we looked around most everywhere. Seeing is believing, they say, but it's thought that lays the mind bare. Why, oh why, do these birds fly? Why so far do they come? How do they know to head exactly here, so sure of being welcome? They flee from home and the misery of its winter cold, flying together, a hopeful pack. Wings painted with hope, they leave, knowing they won't all make it back. And why a few months later do they just turn around and leave? Ornithologists have many explanations, but what do these birds believe? Our boat gets us close to an intense battle on the lake, a Siberian bird taking on a homegrown snake. Having braved and survived many miles of perilous flight, she must find courage all over again to make it to the night. The snake, it just waits, 12 months in these shallow waters. It has eaten many a mama bird, now it stalks the daughters. The snake means no malice, its hunger is not perverse. It does what it must from its own place in the universe. The contest rages on, it's hard to call a winner. The sun sinks rapidly. One will eat the other for dinner. Our boat turns from one sight to another. We joyfully meander. We smile, take pictures of ourselves. 
as my thoughts begin to wander. It's all a bit humbling as modern man looks to make sense of a tiny bird. My mind starts to question everything I've been shown and all that I have heard. We sit at the feet of wise ones. We ask about life's purpose to sages while these fragile winged monks have been going about it for ages. To be a bird is to fly, to preserve life and kiss the sky. To be a bird is to rise high and in doing so being ready to die. To be a bird is to be prepared, to roam the earth without being scared, to get somewhere and only stay there so long before heading back to where you belong. To brave adversity, fly through sun and rain, to do it every year, over and over again. Perhaps the most telling lesson of all, the one that's silent from every bird's call, is the wisdom of knowing how to tell, doing and being a part separating one's ego from one's heart. Maybe if the humble bird could itself speak about self-image and fate, it would simply nudge us to explore the difference between saying, I migrate and I am great.